God, it's freezing. We, we always get this wrong. We stuff this up every time. What did you say about when you drive through a different one? Every time we come to a new one, it's got a new favourite place. <laughs> Oh, no, well, we've mentioned I've it made before. It. Yeah, I've you made did, it. and you've done a great job of it. We're Paul and Tan, and we're currently travelling around Australia in our Toyota troop carrier called Simba. We've got some cracking places to share with you in this episode, so don't miss it. Please hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying our content. It really does help us to grow our channel. Enjoy. In this episode, we head deeper into the Kosciuszko National Park. There's been that much tidying up going on in the front cab this morning. I got, I packed up the back and everything went really well. And then I opened the front seat to get in and I couldn't actually get into the car. There were electronic devices, cameras, wires, cables everywhere. And yeah, and now the jumper pile between us is getting higher and higher by the day. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, uh, it, it's more than a Tetris game. Every day it's different. Um, this, we're heading towards Smiggin Holes this morning um, and the landscape is different to anything we've ever seen before. It's almost like we're not even in Australia. Um, it's windy as outside, isn't it? And you can feel that wind blowing through the valleys. We just want some lookout vantage points. So... Yeah, we're gonna keep rolling along and see what it comes up with. You can imagine this place in the um, winter though, when it's just, I think there's chairlifts over there, maybe. So this is Perisher. Is it? Yeah, Perisher Valley. Hmm, all right, well we'll... Yeah, right here, so there's one of the... Ski resorts. Ski slopes. Yeah, okay. Man from Snowy River Hotel. Wowee. You could actually easily be in another country. Well. Yeah, I know we're acting like complete noobs here. This is this is totally Totally new to us, we've never seen ski slopes in our lives before. No. Coming from the other side of the country, we don't have any of this sort of stuff. It's very rugged, hey. But then there's all these creeks down the bottom. There's nowhere to actually pull over. I'd love to go down and just have a walk along one of those creeks. It's freezing. That's Kosciuszko there. We always get this wrong. We stuff this up every time. Like, we always wear the wrong clothes or we're not prepared enough or we're not informed enough. And we feel like we do so much research on places. It's good fun, but. 
all these hikers in all their professional gear. Right, shorts and a t-shirt. Oh, we are wearing a jumper. I'm still wearing the same clothes I was wearing at Cape York, except for the hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> same deal. All right, up the steps. We've only got 20 minutes on the parking, so. Better be worth it. Ha oh, ha ha. Redbow Town Loop, but um, yeah, there's a little loop road that goes off the highway, runs through the township, whatever it is, and um, yeah, I guess this is the time they get all their maintenance done, but yeah, not much happening here. I think there's still lots of walks and hikes you can do from here though. These are all the ski places to stay in in the winter time. Nobody seems to advertise the price of petrol around here. <laughs> we drove through a servo in Jindabyne and we pulled in actually to get fuel and they didn't have any prices up and we got there and most of the pumps were broken or out of order so we just drove off. This is the start of the Cascades hiking track, which is about, well, it goes on, it's one of the Australian Alps walking tracks, but we're not prepared for that, but we just want to come and see, oh my God, look, the streams are just running and beautiful. So many people up here doing hikes. And they all look like they're real pro at it too. 
<laughs> they've got hiking poles and everything like look in the park um yeah be so good to be able to be close enough to do this wouldn't it don't you reckon okay. to live close enough to be able to do this oh, yeah. be so good so this is the cascades track and on the other side what's it called the dead dead horse gap, dead, dead horse gap. yeah so yeah pretty uh pretty specky what's that see if you can find a dead horse not really look at that look at that view out there my goodness all right onward and up upward So that's a temporary bridge that's been set up for a trail competition this weekend. We not we think it's mountain bikes. Yeah, living living in this area or living you know fairly close to this, you'd be able to the, tackle these um, tackle these trails because some of them are only like four k's or something, aren't they? Yeah. You'd be able to do them, but they've got huts all through this area that you can camp up in with your tents and stuff. So. Yeah, look at this. I mean, does it get any better than that as far as views go? <laughs> that is crazy. camped up we have set up and we are at G High Flats campground I think that's how you say it I think G High Flats yeah um it's beautiful like we're right on the river it's it's um there's a view to the snowies or I think they're the snowies or the ranges anyway um 
Well, you can't quite see them behind these trees anyway. Um, and there's all these like hikers huts. This is, this is the one that's attached to the campground, but these seem to be everywhere in this area. So people hike through here. There's all these walking trails. It's just stunning. I can't wait till this afternoon because they reckon there's loads of wombats come out at dusk. So yeah, this is a heritage site. Look how beautifully maintained it's been. Uh, and you can go in. Oh, let's have a look. So these are hikers huts. Yeah, well, it's cool in here. Oh, it's so nice in here. Please close the door, okay. Well, when you say they're hikers huts, you can't camp in here. So Ca can't you? No. Oh, I thought you were allowed to camp in there. Uh, it's just an example of a hut that's throughout the area that's been restored. Oh, okay. To go back out the same door. That's okay. Wowee, it is so nice and cool in here. It's cleverly made, hey, with the stone. Really, really good. Okay. Part of the old farmstead or whatever it is. So I guess this is a day, could be a day use area, or could it? Is it still a camping area? Do you reckon? No, day use is up. Um, it's not. It's just to come and have a look at day yeah. use areas on the way in, right yeah. there, and you can't camp in here. Okay. River running past it. This river is fantastic. It's one of those rivers with the big pebbly bottoms, and um, there were some guys trout fishing in the river just when we pulled up. They were right in, waded right in deep. It's just beautiful. I wonder what it would have been like a few days ago before all that rain. Much the same, I reckon. Do you think? Yeah. Look at that. So we can inform you a little bit more about the hut. We've just read about it, so do you want to tell a story? The hut there is the original hut. And I think that's, you know, that's all that's left of the original buildings here. That hut there was built in 1952 by the Nankovist family who owned all the land here. Um, all the pebbles were taken from the river. Um, and they built that, and then in 1960, their land was incorporated into the Kosciuszko National Park. It was all built um, by hand, wasn't it? Yeah. All built by hand. Or would they say it was built by the eye? So it was all just make it work. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, yeah. look at it. It's, it's a stunning building. You could so live in that today. It is just, it's so cool inside too. Like cool as in cold. What a, what a spot though, my goodness. So you can't camp in it, no camping, no fires, no nothing. You've got to stay out of it. It's only for heritage purposes that it's, that you can have a look inside yeah, it. So. Interest, yeah. yeah, so nice. So we looked on the little map of the area here and there's about five or six huts in this area. Some of them are on the other side of the river. So most likely won't mm, go there, but I'm thinking there's not going to be any down here either. No. Um, so there's little fire pits in here, so I'm guessing that you can camp, but you'd have to walk your tent into these areas. 
this will be where all the wombats come out tonight I bet um, but yeah got a gorgeous spot hey could have been good to bring the troopy in here <laughs> rivers just there views of the ranges look at that ah. in case you haven't gathered we're fairly impressed with this little place great little find I don't think it was just our find, there's plenty of other people here as well, but... So just sharing what we've got for dinner tonight. Cooked on the baby baby Weber with love. <laughs> Paul have made a beef whatever beef delight. We'll call it a beef delight. <laughs> More special. Yeah, yum. Butterfly beef. Yeah, another one of those woolies. Oh. No, well, we've mentioned I've it before. It. Yeah, I've you did, it. and you've done a great job of it. It's all in the love that it's cooked with. That's right. So we just had a delicious dinner, cooked by Chef O'Hare, and um, we thought we'd come out in search of some wombats. It's probably a bit early for the wombats just yet, but we are getting some beautiful glimpses of the mountains just as the sun kind of sets behind this one and onto that one. So. We were hoping something might come out of the long grass here, but nothing yet. It's a bit early, I think. So, thoughts on the campsite? Beautiful. Yeah, up there. Up there with the best so far, maybe? So far. Mm. It's, I don't know, it's borderline my favourite one oh. so far. Oh. I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of one that's been better. I think also the fact that we um, pulled up stumps early with the driving and came here and kind of got here just at about lunchtime. It's just been really chilled afternoon, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Which is good because, yeah, sometimes the days of driving. I wanted to camp <laughs> on the edge of a pebbly river for a long time. Yeah. And um, He actually went in the water too. He actually went for a swim. I haven't so. actually got close enough on this trip yet until yeah. today. No, it's good. So that's why I'm putting it up there. Okay. Um, amongst the best yeah i reckon it's really nice as well it's definitely up there for me too i didn't swim but it was just, i think it was just the relaxing too like i got to read my book um and i'll say it's relaxing just as we walk past a whole bunch of uh yeah the grading this the road grading. so they, they're fixing the road up in we're not even near this we're right over the other side but we're just walking down the main track for now but um yeah it's good it's good that they're grading it well it's um Quite, quite quiet here in the section we're in um, but it's a it's a long stretch of camp area along the river and the ones closest to the main road were all taken when we got here so we just kept driving till we found a spot um, yeah so nice spot this is called G High Flats campground um, yeah would rate it very highly so and it's just a um, New South Wales Parks campground so if you've got your National Parks Pass, which you're crazy not to have, you have to book it, but it's just a $6 booking fee. That's all it costs, $6. So, yeah, pretty stoked with that. But look at that. So we found a lookout. Oh, look at this river. I think where we are, there's a little bit more river noise. This is flowing, yeah. it's, there's river noise up there, but yeah. this is just flowing really quietly, which is really nice, but look at the ferns down there. Whoa. Oh, this is why we travel. Hey, to see this sort of thing that you don't normally see in your own backyard.
thanks again for watching and your support through hitting that subscribe button or like button means the world to us. Don't forget to tune in next week to continue on with our adventures. If you're keen to watch some of our other trip episodes, here's some links. Thanks again and we'll see you all next week. Cheers!